morning and welcome to Saturday Cinema. Today we're talking about Friendly Persuasion. This was filmed in 1956. Friendly Persuasion is a story of the Birdwells, a loving Quaker family in the midst of the Civil War. Eliza, the mother, a devout woman and a minister in the Quaker faith. Jess is the husband, a thoughtful man, with a strong commitment to his principles. Their children are Joshua, the oldest, a sensitive young man who opposes violence, Maddie, a young teenage daughter who falls in love with the guy next door named Guard, who is a Union soldier, and little Jess, their youngest, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, that is curious about everything, even the war. Also living on their farm was an aunt their friend, a runaway slave. The Quakers, by this time, had become true believers of abolishing. Our movie begins as they prepare for first day meeting, where the Quakers all gather and remain in silence until people have something to say. As they wait in this silence, a Union soldier comes through the door, and he's got plenty to say. As the story unfolds, we watch as each one of the Birdwells finds their own breaking point, tipped into doing something we don't think is moral, and it depends on our humanness, not our spiritual beliefs. The soldier, standing in front of the friends' meeting, says, Are you afraid to fight? As he challenges the Quakers, As they sit there, he talks about the strong young men that could help and the people that are dying for their freedom. Young Jess blurts out, God is love. This is in line with our unity teachings as a whole. On truthunity.net, under God as love, it says, God is love, indeed. But God is even more than love. He is the creator of all love and the eternal source of all love. The Quakers continue by saying things like, they're just humans like us, and it's wrong to fight. One young man even says, you would have us kill one man to free another? The Union soldier insists that they must pick a side and they must stand up and fight for freedom. And Jess stands up and says, I often ask myself what I would do if I saw my family threatened, my wife and my children's lives in danger. On truthunity.net, in The Strength of Unity Authority, it says, Just as churches are tools of the individual, unity teaches that the Bible is a tool rather than a final authority. This view of the Bible as a spiritual or moral resource rather than a final authority is necessary for building a church without authority. According to Hogue in 1994, it goes on to say that the book is inspired by God and the authority then is not the church or the Bible, but God. The still small voice And once God can be found within each person, authority ultimately rests with the individual. As the troops draw clearer, young Josh is drawn to fight. And as he walks in to tell his parents that this is his choice, this is what he's going to do, he says, I hate fighting. I don't want to die. I don't even know if I could kill anyone if I tried. But I have to try, so long as others have to. His father, Jess, replies with, Any one of us would die to protect each other. But that's not what thee will be asked to do, Josh. What thee will be asked to do is to kill. When Eliza pleads with Jess to talk some sense into Josh, Jess replies, I'm his father, not his conscience. The metaphysical Bible tells us that consciousness 
is the phase of mind in which one is actively aware of one's thoughts. In Keeping a True Lent, Chapter 9, The Philosophy of Denial, it says, If you are not at all times conscious that God is the source of your being, and that he is universal justice, purity, peace, wisdom, and love, you wander from your course and are aware of danger. You are dashed upon the rock of selfish personality. This was Josh's tipping point. He goes off to war. A conscious choice that we must all decide for ourselves. As the rebels draw near, even Nanak, the family friend, takes off to fight the battle and says that he would rather die a free man than live in slavery. Later, when Josh's horse returns without him, lathered in sweat, Jess decides that's his tipping point. He says, a man's life ain't worth a hill of beans except and he lives up to his own expectations as he leaves off to find his son. Soon after, the rebels actually enter the farm, and Eliza invites them to take anything they want. She offers to feed them herself, and her and Maddie go in to cook with little Jess. As she goes in to serve those that would just as soon have ravaged and plundered and killed all, she hears her pet goose being accosted by a soldier outside. And Eliza, too, has reached her tipping point. She grabs a broom and hits and hits and hits until the goose is released. She drops the broom in tears. She realizes she must fall back on her faith and goes in to serve them. And graciously, they leave. Jess finds his friend dying as a soldier shoots him. He falls down, and as the soldier starts to walk away, Jess again finds his chipping point. He goes after him and struggling with a rifle, trying to hurt the man that was hurting him. He lets go and he tells him to go, be gone. Finds Josh and they go home. This was a beautiful story about a family, each one finding a point inside themselves where they had to decide in their own consciousness what they would faced with what they felt was overwhelming odds against them. On Lessons in Truth, Lesson 3, through what faculties does man find God? We find or become aware of God through the use of our faculties of thinking and feeling when they are directed Godward. God is not lost, but we often lose awareness of him in our human consciousness. In the end, Anak and the family were back. They were off to Sunday meeting, first day meeting. Life was back to normal. Only thing is, they knew that they all could reach that point, that each and every one of them had done their best. And sometimes we miss the mark. And each of them learned that even when they tipped that point, there was a way back. They found their faith inside themselves again. I hope you've enjoyed this rendition of Friendly Persuasion. Come back next week for another Saturday Cinema. Blessings. 